Let's have a little chat. Hey, I'm Ben. I'm a huge fly fisherman. Welcome back to another episode of Huge Fly Fisherman. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. I've got some scouting to do and I'm just going to talk to you about a few things that are on my mind. So what is this? What am I scouting? I'm scouting boat ramps. I drove through here about a week ago. This is like, I don't know, 30, 40 miles of my local river. And I was pleasantly surprised that the river is thawed out. You know, it's usually around this time of year, but I never know exactly when it's going to be. So the river's open, but I don't know the boat ramp situation. When I drove through here last Last week I stopped at one boat ramp and it was not accessible due to snow. My boats have been entombed in snow for the last many months and I am itching to get them out. So I'm going to drive down here and see what boat ramps are open, what is accessible because I have plans to do a lot of floating in the next few weeks. So I'm taking a few hours today and just scouting it out. I don't even have a rod with me. I'm not planning on fishing. I'm just doing basically a research mission. And the reason that I'm taking a day to do this is because this information isn't really available. I could call the managing entity of the boat ramps, but they probably don't even know. There's no better way for me to get this information than going out there and finding out myself. And I think there's a parallel there between what I'm doing today and a lot of things in fly fishing. You need to put in a little bit of work. As our society is doing whatever it is it's doing, people don't want to put in the work and they just want the information given to them. I don't think it's entitlement. I just think that things these days are so easy and accessible. Everything in fishing should be that way too. But in reality, fishing's not like that at all. You have to put in some effort to get the results. Often in fishing, if you want to be more successful than the other guy, you gotta walk a little bit further. You gotta stay out a little bit later. Or in my case today, I'm just dedicating some time to go look. I'm gonna put my eyes on it rather than search it up on the internet or ask a fly shop. This is the best way that I know how to get the information that I'm looking for. Today, I'm willing to work a little bit harder, but I'm not talking about anything extraordinary here. I'm lazy as all I'm doing is driving around and looking at stuff, but that's what it takes. I'm sure there are a bunch of other people around here that are wondering the same thing that I am. Can I go float right now? Well, they can sit at home and wonder, I'm gonna go find out. I thought about maybe calling some friends and doing a little fishing while we're on this mission. I mean, I'm going to a trout stream, but I decided to do this by myself. I like being by myself sometimes. I like driving by myself. I like fishing by myself. You know, I don't need to tell you it's a good time to process whatever's floating around in your brain. And driving for me is a really good time to do that. And I certainly don't mind a little bit of windshield time. I've just been doing it my whole life and it's normal for me. I drive a lot. And that makes me think, you know, it's kind of funny the standards that people have in, I guess, basically different geographical areas of how far they're willing to drive for fishing, specifically like a day trip. You know, how far do you drive to fishing? I'm lucky enough that I can walk to fishing, but most of the time I'm driving. Oh, look, there's some bighorn sheep. Get out of the way! My buddy Larry and I always joke about a Colorado day trip because I'll drive two and a half hours each way to go fishing somewhere. Larry's in Florida and there's no way in hell those guys are trailering two and a half hours each way for a day of fishing. I don't know why it's different, maybe just because they have so much at their fingertips so they don't have to drive that two and a half hours. But I mean, I do too. I just drove past 50 miles of trout stream to get down here to where I'm going. So that's just something I think about the disparity or, you know, different standards of maybe what type of fisherman you are or where you live how far are you willing to go and that ties back to what I started with how hard are you willing to work for it what are you willing to put into it to get what you want to get out of it so just something to think about all right here's the turnoff for the first boat ramp let's check it out all right this is doable I think the roads a little bit sketch there's a bunch of snow on it and I think I'll have to punch through a berm to get out of here but I think it's on this is the ramp where I want to start when I get the boat out and this is the one that I had the most concerns about not being accessible so things are looking good so far I guess some of you probably know exactly where I am shout out Bozeman and you might be curious like I am about how the boat ramp access is right now well here you go it's game on if you're watching this on YouTube this information's about two weeks old. If you're watching on my website, it's a few days old. So get out here. All right, let's uh, hop back in the car and go to the next one. 
All right, moving on. I talked a little bit about how people just want that information instantly. Let's uh, sort of walk around that for a minute. I think that a lot of people think that fly fishing is just plug and play. You show up in the right place at the right time with the right fly, you're going to have success. If you don't understand that that's not how fly fishing works, then you don't understand fly fishing at all. And I'm not trying to make the point that you have to pay your dues and things like that, although that's true. I think what I'm trying to say is that catching fish goes along with not catching fish. It's all just fishing and you need to enjoy all of it. There are so many people that want that instant gratification and I get it, they don't have a lot of free time or the luxury of time to just go drive and look at boat ramps. You know, they have that one weekend day or whatever and they gotta go catch fish. Well, that's just not the right way to look at it. Not catching fish is still going fishing and it's still fun. And I think if you really like want it that bad, like, all right, I've got this one tarpon trip lined up. It's my first time and I probably won't be able to afford to do it for another 10 years because tarpon fishing is stupid expensive. So that guy goes on that trip and he just wants it so badly. He wants to catch that fish and just have the revelation and everything's good in the world. I believe that you can't want it that badly. You're just setting yourself up for disappointment. You need to set your expectations low. And then anything that happens is just icing on the cake. That's the way I see it. Because I have been that guy where I wanted it so, so badly. And then I just get disappointed because it didn't happen. For me, fly fishing is a lot more fun if I just let things happen and I don't want something too bad. It's tough to do that sometimes because yeah, I do want to catch that fish, but you have to put yourself in a frame of mind to not be disappointed. Maybe this makes no sense to you. You've never even had these thoughts, but it's something that I think about a lot. So I think there's an opinion out there that fly fishing is plug and play, and that's not true. But I contradict myself a lot. So let's just say like, for me, fly fishing can be plug and play a lot. I am fortunate enough that I can go places and I meet up with somebody and they say, okay, get in this boat, use this fly, cast right there and then things happen. In that instance, I'm missing out on an aspect of fly fishing that is also hugely important, and that is figuring things out for yourself and learning for yourself. Figuring out that puzzle or whatever, or even just figuring out, you know, which holes are better, you know, or does, is this side of the river better than that one? Or maybe don't stand here because you're gonna get your back cast in a tree all the time. Those things are absolutely part of the adventure or process or journey of fly fishing, whatever cheesy term you wanna throw at it. And I'm not exactly sure what the point I'm trying to drive home really is. It's just a concept or a mix of earning it, not wanting it too bad, don't expect instant gratification. You know, it's, it's just a big sort of nebulous cloud of ideas that are sort of interrelated and center around fly fishing. It would probably be helpful if I wrote this stuff out in a script like I usually do, but I'm just kind of going by the seat of my pants here. All right, next boat ramp's coming up. Let's see what's going on. I think it's just gonna get better as we go downstream because we're going down in elevation and theoretically less snow. Okay, this ramp has some snow on it, but I think we're probably good to go. Putting in would be no problem. I kind of want to take out here though for the first float down here. If you know where we are, shout out Bozeman. This is the upper ramp, it's good to go. The lower ramp is not looking so good. That channel's got no water and it. it's like all ice. Getting a boat into it or out of it is not gonna be fun. The ramp's good, but the river situation's not good. Whew, man, the water looks. Awesome. Can't wait to get the boat out. I gotta dig it out. Okay, so another one good to go. Let's head downstream some more. All right, back in the car. We're gonna take this discussion in a totally different direction. You wanna know something? I suck at nymphing. And that's not even like a haha funny joke. No, like I'm not good at it and getting worse and worse. I used to be a lot better at it. And I think it's a product of the rig that I'm fishing and I'm stuck in a rut, just fishing the traditional bobber, leader, split shot, two flies. It works, but it ain't great. It's not a great way to fish. I don't wanna go full Euro, but I need to improve my rigging. 
I've talked about the 90 degree rig. I made a video about it. A bunch of my friends do all this, you know, swivel and all kinds of weird stuff like that. I'm not even sure what route I want to go, but I need to do something, man. I feel like I'm in the stone age with my nymph rigging. I don't have the right flies. I think I have about four nymphs in my house and they're probably all too big. I don't love nymphing, but it needs to be in the bag of tricks at all times. And like all things fly fishing, the only way to get better at it is to do it and do it a lot. But that's like the last thing that I want to do, man. We've just gone through winter. I hardly trout fished at all, especially around here. Certainly no nymphing, except for a few days ago, which really drove home the point that, wow, I suck at this. So I'm just trying to convince myself, I think, that I need more practice. And to be honest with you, I'm a little bit nervous. Some of this floating that I have coming up in the next couple weeks, I'm gonna have some people in the boat and they're not from around here, so I'm guiding. I wanna put them on fish. Oh, there's some deer but I'm not super confident in my ability to do that, strictly with the nymphing game. So that's just one area of improvement that I've been kind of thinking on. There are certainly other areas that need to be improved, but that's kind of the one I want to concentrate on right now. I love nymphing! All right, that's enough about the nymphing. Let's check out the next boat ramp downstream. All right, this one's good to go too. I feel like I should see some rising fish up there. I actually skipped past the uh, boat ramp that's pay to play. It's good to go, but the gate was locked. I've actually never seen that gate locked before, but I don't know what's up with that, but this one's good. Things are looking fine. Yep, there's the rise, just saw it. All right, let's get back in the car. There's one more boat ramp to check out and one more thing that I wanna talk about. So going back to the nymphing for a minute, I know why I suck at nymphing. It's cause I don't do it a lot. And that's a good problem to have, in my opinion. I do a lot of dry fly fishing or streamer fishing or just not even trout fishing, something totally different. So that's cool, but I talk all the time about how you gotta be well-rounded and versatile, and nymphing is a big part of that if you're a trout fisherman, which I am by default. You know, I am a product of my environment. I live in trout country. I am a trout fisherman. And not only that, but I'm a Western trout fisherman. I'm used to like big bugs and big tippets and things like that. I would probably get my butt kicked if I tried to go fish like the bat and kill or something like that. That's so far removed from what I do on a day-to-day -day basis with trout fishing. Or the Delaware, dude, I would get crushed, I know it. Actually, I could play that little dry fly game on the Delaware, I might be all right at that one. So I'm a product of where I live, but also what I choose to do. Like I said, I just drove past 50 miles of trout streams to come look at this trout stream, because I want to fish down here. And it's different than up there. I'd be using different tactics. I'd be learning different things. So I'm a product of where I live, but also what I choose to do. And you're the same, I'm sure. You know, one thing that comes to mind is like, dudes from Florida or just saltwater dudes in general, they're fantastic, amazing casters. They could shoot a laser beam 90 feet. I will never be able to cast like they can, but if you put them on a trout stream and say, cast 20 feet around that rock and under that bush, they can't do it. Or not just that, they can't even cast a five weight a real long way, because they're not used to it. That's not what they do all the time. They're not bad casters, it's just not in their wheelhouse to do that. And what's my point? I don't know. I think it just you know ties into the versatility thing that I always harp on. And I think it's just important to be aware of your strengths or shortcomings in fishing. It's gonna help you be a better angler if you know what you're good at or what you suck at. And of course, you should strive to get better at the things that you're not good at. But I get it, it's hard, you know? There's only so many days in a year to get out there and fish, and you wanna prioritize what you wanna do to get the most enjoyment out of it for yourself. So it's tough, you know? I know I should get out there on the lawn and practice casting, but when's the last time I did that? I mean, it's been a while. So I think that's the end of that point. I'm a product of my environment. All right, next boat ramp is right here. I'm pretty sure this one's gonna be good to go, but I just wanna lay eyes on it myself because it'll make me feel better. I'll know exactly what is there. 
Okay, that one's good. I didn't get out of the car because there's actually somebody putting a boat in there and getting ready to head down the river. And I don't really like yelling at the camera around other randoms. I just feel like a complete tool. So that boat ramp's good to go. That's one less thing for me to stress about in the next week or so before I'm actually out here by myself. You know what, it's 12.30 in the afternoon. They're just putting on right now. I mean, probably good for the fishing's sake, but they're gonna have to hustle. That's a, that's a long float. Anyway, that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Thanks for coming along with me on my scouting mission and uh, listening to me just spout off. If you know my videos, then you know I need to do that every now and then and uh, yelling at the camera helps me get through things and get stuff off my chest. So thanks for listening. So that's it. I'm turned around and headed home. Thank you as always for watching another one of my huge fly fisherman videos. I'll be back as soon as I can with another video about fly fishing for you. Until then, call a friend and see if they want to go fishing. Stay huge. I definitely should have brought a rod. The river looks fantastic. I am a dummy.